welcome back to another episode of Teardown Tuesday. It's been a while since we've looked at a gas thermostat, and I had one in the box of parts awaiting teardown here that we hadn't done yet. What we're looking at here is a type of thermostat called a Model FD, and you can see that here, FD. And the FD thermostat is an older design. It's been around a long time. It's very commonly used in higher temperature applications like uh, pizza ovens, deck ovens, uh, convection ovens, that kind of thing. The thermostat's entirely mechanical. There's no electrical components. And if we take a look at the, the casting, the body of the valve, there's several different things we can note here. The first one is in the bottom. We have casting labeled in and out. In is our incoming gas supply, and out is our main burner gas supply. As we look at the rest of the valve, you can see there's some adjustments on the face, but there's also these two screws off to the side. One of these is pilot, P, and the other is labeled B for bypass. So when we talk about main gas coming through the outlet, the pilot assembly is controlled through this secondary screw. And this screw is acting like a, a throttle. And the pilot itself would be connected to where this brass fitting is. The B, the bypass port, is a function these valves have that keeps the burner lit at just the barest minimum flame possible. You, you don't want the burner to go completely out every time the thermostat satisfies. You want it to maintain that very, very low bypass flame. So this is really, literally a thermostat bypass. It takes incoming gas, bypasses it around the thermostat system, and just dumps it out the outlet. And anytime you install a new valve, you have to set this. This does not come preset from the factory. It is not ready to go out of the bag. You've got to set this every time you install a new valve. Same thing with the pilot assembly, and also the knob here. You've got to verify that the thermostat is actually calibrated. And depending on what it's installed in, there will be different uh, manufacturer instructions for each of those. But in this case, you can see that the screws loosen up, and you set the thermostat, find the temperature, loosen these screws up, and turn the knob to match the temperature. The thermostat calibration on these is not done internally. It's done externally, just moving the knob. This style valve, because of the way it throttles and the way it runs a bypass flame, it, it will hold a very tight temperature window. Call that a hysteresis, that swing up and down in temperature in the oven. If you leave the door closed and you leave the valve in the same position for a long period of time, that thermostat is going to regulate to a very consistent temperature in the oven. Much tighter than a uh, snap action, like a KX style, or some of the other ones we've looked at. The first thing we want to do to take a look inside this valve is get it opened up. But to get it opened up, they've put some securing compound, some kind of hard compound over one of the screws. So the first thing I'm going to do with this valve is let that soak. And I've got, got some acetone here and a piece of tubing. We're going to use this like a pipette. And we're going to see if that acetone can soften up that little bit of locking compound. So we're going to use the little tubing to transfer just a little bit of acetone down into that opening. So we'll let that sit a while. And then we'll see if it softens up. So we were able to get this softened up enough after letting it soak to get the, the inside of the Phillips screw there cleaned out and start backing that screw out. So with that out of the way, I think we're okay here to start opening up the, the body of the valve. So right away you can see there's a, 
a pretty complex linkage system going on inside the valve here. And then we've got the actual bellows system up in the top. Let's try and get this apart first. Alright, so with that removed, you can see there's a sort of slotted mechanism here. So we pull that slotted mechanism off. So this is a threaded mechanism, and as we turn this, we're unthreading part of the mechanism. With the valve assembled, unthreading that mechanism would put more pressure on the, the bellows. So you can see what we just unthreaded there. Oops. And you can also see the little feed where the tubing comes in to the back of our bellows. And then we've got this little retainer plate some additional hardware down inside there. So when we change the temperature setting on the knob, all we're doing is changing the amount of pressure that's on this little bowl. So now down here inside the actual valve mechanism, we've got this plate that opens and closes. And when it comes all the way closed, there's a sort of spring action to it. take it out, you can see there's two, two very flatly ground ceiling surfaces here. And they do look like ground metal, they don't look like rubber. And there's also a very, very small calibration screw. I don't even know if you can see it. It's a very small calibration screw right here. So this entire mechanism pivots in there. And, and looking at the inside of the body, you can see the incoming gas here would come up and through. And then we have our bypass port feeding out the side here. And then we have our main gas going down through the larger opening. And I would guess here the reason they've got a seal on the bypass port is so that if the valve is turned to a fully off position, it shuts down the bypass gas. So that's the upper part of the valve. We have this intricate little spring mechanism pushed on by the, the little hydraulic bellows assembly. And we've talked about it in other videos, but it's worth mentioning again that this capillary tube and bulb system has a fluid in it. And as it's heated up, that fluid is expanding and putting more pressure in the bellows. So let's open up the, the bottom half here and follow the gas passages through the rest of the valve. So now with the, the bottom part of the valve opened up, we can see that there's some, this machine work is pretty, it's got some texture to it, it's a little rough. But you can see there's some, some passages machined into these bodies. So if we look at the pilot passage first, P here, let's go ahead and back that screw out, see what that looks like inside. And it's probably going to be very similar to like a carburetor jet, where it has a taper to it. As you back the screw out further, it changes the amount that can flow past the tapered part of the, the body. Let's take a look here. Yeah, so it's very similar to a carburetor jet, in that you've got this tapered portion that's going into a fixed diameter hole. So as you back this out, you're able to flow more around it. Very simple, gas feeds in from the body here on this port, goes into the bottom part of this bore, comes out right around in here. That brass piece, depending on where it's positioned, controls the flow rate through this small hole, which then lines up into our pilot passage. Very straightforward. Bypass is probably the same way. In fact, it may even be an identical screw. Yeah, looks the same to me. So bypass on this fitting is bringing in gas from here, from the body of the valve, feeding it over into this bore, 
our tapered brass needle controls through this hole, which then flows back into this passage here, which leads to the outlet. So it is literally a bypass. It just dumps gas around the thermostat assembly. Pretty neat little setup. There's a lot of intricate manufacturing that's going on inside this assembly. The, the base of the valve itself is pretty straightforward machine work, but this thing has a lot of very small, intricate little stampings and springs attached to it. It's pretty neat. All right, so let's talk about the principles we're using. We've got a, a sealed space with fluid in it, and we're using that pressure ratio to expand our bellows and change the amount of pressure we're putting in onto our thermostat assembly. Uh, we've got some threads, the threads in the bottom of the, the bellows assembly there, that allow us to change the amount of pressure that we're putting on it by turning. So we turn the knob, that just changes the amount of pressure on that bellows. We've got this series of spring assemblies that we're using to throttle open and closed based on the, the pressure on the bellows onto the back of this assembly. We've got some, some small threads with tapers to control flow through a fixed opening. When we talk about how this fails, the failures for this are almost always in the capillary tube and bulb. Anything that happens that damages this, in particular back in here where the, the joints are soldered, or if it's just flexed too many times and it breaks off or becomes damaged, it, it loses its charge or it can no longer move the pressure through the capillary tube and that makes this bellows ineffective. The bellows itself doesn't usually wear out. It's almost always externally failed in terms of being flexed around or heat cycled or physically caught and damaged. The inside of the valve could potentially have issues if you had pipe dope or debris, water or sand coming down the gas line maybe, but that's pretty rare. You're not going to see a lot of debris in these. Beyond that, these have been a very reliable style of valve for a very long time. Just not a lot of stuff in here to go wrong. Very straightforward, very simple. All right, I think that'll do it for now. Thanks for watching. Hi folks, my name is Jack Kell and I'm a senior technical trainer for SmartCare. The video you've just watched is part of a larger series of technical training videos we make available to our technicians at SmartCare. If you found this interesting and you'd like to see more, please subscribe. I'll be releasing a new component teardown video every Tuesday in 2022. If you're already a smart care technician and you have a part that you'd like to see me tear down, please reach out to me internally for shipping instructions. If you're not a smart care technician, but you or someone you know would like to learn more about a career as a service technician specializing in commercial restaurant equipment, please check out our open positions at www.smartcaresolutions.com forward slash careers. Thanks for watching.